All right, so just a little geometry throwback for you, okay? So we're gonna use some geometric principles today, but we're gonna do lots of different things. So supplies you're gonna need today, all right? Um, a paper plate, which I already gave you. Scissors, you're gonna have to share because I don't have that many. Um, and then you're gonna need some markers and there's some colors there for you, okay? All of that's on the back table, go. All right, get what you need, yep. Yep. All right, so you're gonna find that your notes today are a little different. Um, there will be some questions kind of bolded as we go through. Those will be things that we kind of answer as we go, but most of it is instructions about how to construct your unit circle. Let's start with just the definition of the unit circle. That would be important to know what it is. A unit circle is a circle novel with a radius of one. centered at the origin. Okay, so a unit circle, it's just a circle with a radius of one that's centered at the origin. Okay, circle with a radius of one centered at the origin. Knowing what we know about the equation that we saw up in the warm up, what do you think the equation of the unit circle is? Yep, x squared plus y squared equals one. We didn't move it because it's centered at the origin, so no parentheses with x or y, and the radius is one, one squared is one. Okay. All right, so here we go, step one. I'm so excited. Okay. Your paper plate is your unit circle, okay? So the first thing that I'd like for you to do is take your red marker and we're gonna mark the rim in red. It does not matter which side you write on, okay? It doesn't have to be super thick. It can be just a thin, okay? Something like that, all the way around so you don't have to color the whole rim, all right? People like to do that, I'm not sure why, okay? But you just kinda wanna go all the way around with red, all right? It's specific and if you forget, it's in your instructions. Let's not leak, shall we? but just gives us some idea, all right? I wanted us to start with a circular object. It may not be perfect, but that's okay, all right? Why do you think it's important, or why do you think I chose to have us mark the rim? Why is that important? That is actually our circle, okay? Remember from geometry, a circle is the set of all points equidistant from a fixed point called the center, okay? This whole white thing is a circular region. The circle is the outside edge. Okay, so it's important to have the rim marked because the circle is the outside edge. OK, 
Okay, so when we speak of the unit circle, we're not talking about all the space in between. We're talking about this red thing that we just highlighted. Okay. <coughs> all right, step two. All right, without a ruler, we want to mark the center of the circle with blue. How can I find the center? <coughs> fold it in half. Yep, fold it in half. Yeah, let's not guesstimate. Fold it in half. That's the taco. Yeah, that's not. Okay. And then I, I fold it in half again. That's quesadilla. That's Kevin. Kevin, you're pointing at that one. See what? You can play it on this one. No, I had to iron on this morning because I forgot. Yes, my you iron is back there in my beach towel. I was over there ironing like a crane person on your desk. <laughs> You know when I remembered it? About 9.30 last night. I did no school. And I have no shame. Who is that? So far this isn't as bad as I thought. Okay. All right. So we're going to open it up. And we're going to put a dot here in the center. <laughs> and we're going to label it zero, zero. Okay. If this is a unit circle, it's sitting on the coordinate plane, it's centered at zero. Okay, it's centered at the origin. Okay. So, if it's centered at the origin on the coordinate plane, can we now mark our X and our Y axis? Yes. yes. Okay, which one's going to be our X axis? The first zero. Okay, the horizontal one. And which one's going to be our Y axis? The vertical. Okay, so let's mark those. Yep, and blue. And I know you think you won't get confused, but go ahead and write X axis above the X axis and Y axis above the Y axis. It took me forever to highlight the words in color when I was typing this up. But it's all good. I'll make it in word. Now this original, no, I started, the first two lessons we did were his, and then I didn't like them, so I picked from several different places. I still use a lot of his material, but changed my mind. This bad. Okay, this is a lesson that was actually originated in about 1982. My original paperwork from this is like, y'all don't know what a mimeograph, like a ditto machine is, but anyway, that's where all my stuff comes from. You'll see a snippet of it here in a minute. You'll notice it's like it's from a typewriter. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. You'll see it here in just a second. Oh, really? Yep. All right. So switch over to your next page, and we're going to get into the next part. So, so far, we've labeled the actual circle, the red part. We've labeled the center at 0, 0, and our axes go X and the Y axis since we are centered at the origin. Okay. Now, let's go up here, and this is something we're going to write, write down. We want to find the circumference of the unit circle. All right, it's an important concept. So let's think about it. How do we find circumference? What's the formula? Two pi, two pi times the radius. Well, what's the radius of the unit circle? One, so my circumference is two pi. What does that mean? What is circumference? It's like perimeter, it's the distance around my circle. So if I start at one spot, and I go all the way around, bless you, I've gone a distance of two pi, okay? It is the distance around the unit circle. Okay, so two pi, that is our distance around the unit circle. Because the radius in the unit circle is one. All right, next step. All right, this goes on our plate. I want you to find where the positive x-axis 
intersects the unit circle. Okay, the positive x-axis. All right. So which side of the x-axis would that be? The left or the right? Right. The right, where it intersects the unit circle, and we're going to put a dot right there. Okay, on top of the red. And we're going to call it A. This is known as our anchor point. All right, we'll talk about why in a second. Okay, so where the positive x-axis intersects the unit circle, we're going to call it A. All right. Okay, so we're going to label the x and the y. Because if we get A in the wrong spot, we'll have issues in the Well, I suppose I did too. Positive x-axis intersects the unit circle. Okay. Now, the process of unit circle trig involves moving around this circle. And how we move is very specific. Okay, When we move, we trace out what's known as an arc. So if I started at A, and I went all the way around back to A, how long is that arc? 6.02 2 pi. I went a distance of 2 pi, okay? <coughs> so we're not talking about angles, that would be degrees, right? We're talking about arc lengths. How far did I go around, right? What if I started at A and I went halfway? That would be 1 pi, okay? All the way would be 2 pi, halfway would be 1 pi. All right. So, here's what we're going to do. This is the activity I was talking about. All right. See how it looks like it's from a typewriter? It's because it is. All right. So, here's what I want you to do independently. All right. I want you to answer these questions. All right. Don't put anything on your plate. All right. This just goes in your notes. And then, once you've answered them independently, I want you to check it with somebody close to you. See what you think. Do you agree? All right. Uh, on E, where it says O to A, that's the origin, all right, to A. All right, take a second, answer those questions, and then we'll check them. Conversation. All right, so if we start at A and we go all the way around back to A, how far did we go? We went to pi, okay? We went to pi, okay? Then for B, okay, if we trace from A up to the top where the y-axis intersects the, the positive y-axis intercepts the unit circle, what do you think? One half, one half pi. We usually write that pi over two, okay? So instead of one half pi, we will write that as pi over two. You will never see it written one half pi. Okay. <laughs> so get in the habit of pi over two. Okay, same thing. Then on C, if you go from A over to the other side of the x-axis, how far is that? Pi. Pi. Okay, it's halfway around the entire circle. All right. I heard a conversation on B over here that said it's a fourth of the whole circumference, which was to pi, which is where you would get that pi over 2. Okay, so that was a good conversation. And then what about D? All right, if we go from A down to the negative part of the y-axis. It is 3 pi over 2. One and a half pi I heard from somewhere in the room. That's 3 halves pi. So we write that 3 pi over 2. Okay, now those arc lengths are what we call a family on the unit circle. They call them the pi over 2 family, but they also have a name, which is the quadrantal arcs. Why do you think they call them the quadrantal arcs as a whole? There's four of them, and they hit all four quadrants. Okay, they hit all four quadrants. So they were very creative with that name. Okay, what's the length from the origin out to A? It's one. That's the radius of the unit circle. It's a length of one. All right, what was the initial point of all of those arcs? A. a. We started everything at A. Okay, it was my initial point. How would you describe the terminal point? Where it ends, okay? Nothing, it wasn't a specific answer. It was just where it ends. 
Terminal means ending. If I terminate you, I'm not going to terminate you. Okay? But, right, same root word. Okay? It's where the arc ends. All right? So here's what I want you to do. With red, I want you to put your quadrantal arcs on your paper plate. So um, up at the top, we're going to put pi over 2. On the left side, we're going to put pi. At the bottom, 3 pi over 2. And then over on the right side, 2 pi. Now, one thing I would caution you about, let me just show you this before you get started. I would put 2 pi underneath 8 so that I know I've gone all the way around and back. Okay? So I put 2 pi underneath 8. Up at the top, I'm just going to put pi over 2 to the left pi, and at the bottom, 3 pi over 2. Okay, so they're literally just labeled around your circle. Okay. We want to be sure we get them in the right spots. Okay. Rocking and rolling. All right. <coughs> okay. Now, we're ready for activity two, and it says to use the definition of the unit circle and the length of OA, so that radius, to help you complete activity two. So take a second, all right, on your notes, complete activity two, and then we'll check them with each other and then check them as a group. Okay. Yeah. All right. Length of OA. One. We already said that a few minutes ago. Yay. All right. Since we know we're talking about the unit circle, um, what would be the coordinates of the point where the positive y axis, so up at top at pi over 2, what would be that ordered pair up there? Zero, 1. Okay. What about the coordinates where the negative x axis, so over at pi? Negative 1 and 0. What about at the bottom, negative y-axis? 0, negative 1. Okay? So moving around the order, the unit circle. Now, I, it didn't ask about over there at 2 pi, but what would be the coordinates there? 1, 0. Okay? Those coordinates are important. Okay? So at 2 pi, we would have 1, 0. All right, so everything's important. So that being said, what would be the coordinates of the terminal point, so just using the right terminology, of the arc length 3 pi over 2? What's my ordered pair at 3 pi over 2? Zero, negative, Zero one. negative 1. And what are the coordinates of the terminal point of arc length pi? Negative 1, 0. Perfect. Here's what I want you to do, okay? In green, why am I in camera mode? Don't want that. Um, in green, I want you to place those ordered pairs for the quadrantal arcs. Okay? I want you to place the ordered pairs. So we're going to write them. Even at 2 pi, I want you to put 1, 0. Okay? So I want you to do them all. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay? Put those ordered All right. Is I want you to take your black. And inside the rim, okay, we're going to trace. To my notch down to A, just sitting on the x-axis. Okay, so it's just gonna be a little bitty black arc in there. Over the red? Not over it, beside it. Okay, so beside the red, all right, from the x-axis up to where you cut, all right, we're gonna do a little black. It's okay. See what I mean? Like it's kind of arts across today. Okay. 
You don't get a grade for it. That's the good news. get it in the same spot okay so it's a variable right and in trigonometry we get away from x's and y's and we go to really cool variables greek letters okay so we're going to use a new letter a new variable called theta okay it's a circle with a squiggle in the middle okay that's the easiest way to draw it okay so next let's see next to that little black arc that you drew we're going to do a circle oh, no. with a squiggle in the middle. In black? In black. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to label that arc length theta. Theta what? I don't know how to draw theta. It's okay. You'll know where to draw. I was up there with the Greek ABCs. Let me see your theta. You're a Greek ABC. Okay. Don't be neat to theta. You're a Greek ABC. All of our... Uh, Say B. No. It's a squiggle. We got this. That one makes more sense. All you have to do is draw it all the same. Yeah. Yeah. Like where? Here, I'm excited to block the heart. Can you help me? Label as. Yeah, those are the guys. I don't think so. They've been sanded really well. What are they? My new hall passes. Oh, word. Okay? All right. Hey, I made those. Thanks. All right, I want you to unfold your plate now. Yay. Okay. 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 And I want us to just look at it for a second, okay? What do you notice about this theta distance that we marked in the first quadrant? It's the same. It's the same where? Everywhere. In every quadrant, right? From where? X axis to the notch, okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you just to trace that distance in black in every quadrant. Don't label it. Just as a reminder that this is the same distance in every quadrant. It's this distance theta. We don't know what it is because it moves. It's a variable. But it's only from the x-axis? Only from the x-axis to the point. Okay. So it only goes from the x-axis to the point. Okay. No. Anyway, I'm kind of confused. So I do it. So go from the x-axis to the point. No, x-axis, which was the x-axis. There you go. The point. No, is that the same distance? No. No. So it's only these two. Yeah. As you should. It's better this way. Did you make them back so you felt better? Yeah. Oh, girl. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next thing. So because this is on the unit circle and the unit circle is on a coordinate plane, this point, I mean, wait, we made it big for emphasis, but this is a point on the unit circle, which means it has coordinates. All right. So I'm going to label that point in the first quadrant right next to my little notch I cut out. P1 in purple, okay? Why do you think I chose P1? It's the first point, where is it located? In the first quadrant, okay? Now, what would I label the point in quadrant two? Ooh, where is quadrant two? It makes a C, right? So you gotta go backwards. So P2. I'll go down to P3 and back over to P4. Right? So we've labeled those points, P1, 2, 3, and 4, for all four quadrants. Okay? Now the most difficult part, especially for y'all that are perfectionists, is we want to connect those four points with a dotted line. Okay? You have your ID. It's a great straight edge. All right? Or you can fake it. All right, which is what I'm going to do. All right, so we're going to make a rectangle, connect our dots. Let me just kind of show dotted you. Line. Dotted lines, 
okay, that connects all four points. I'll let you see mine. Hang on just a second. I'm not going to be that picky about if it's perfect. Okay, so there we go. What if you... What if you did in the middle, well, that is a perfect really square? Yeah. Mm -hmm. could, could it be a perfect yeah, square? Yeah, it was a middle. Okay, we're doing purple. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay, I want you to look at it. We refer to this as what's called the family rectangle. Okay, why do you think we use that term? Because they're related. Because they're what? How's it related? They're in love. Uh, they're in love. What's the same? Personality. <laughs> I kind of like that. All right, so we call them a family rectangle because they are the same. They are related. What would be true about this ordered pair in the first quadrant? Oh, yeah, I did. It would be the opposite of people. What? Oh, I thought you were saying that. Would have the same y value in the opposite? All right, so if I look at point one, all right, it's got an x and a y value there. We don't know what they are. But because they're in the same location, what would be true about that point in the second quadrant? Same y value, different x. Okay. What about here? Same x. Everything same. It's just so different. They're just negative, right? What about in point four? Same x. Different y. Opposite y. Okay. So the location in the quadrant. All right. If I know at least one ordered pair, could I find the other three? Yes. Sure. Okay. So we refer to it as a family rectangle because. The order pairs in each quadrant uh, let's say change only by signs. Okay, and next that you want to put plus minus so you know it's either positive or negative depending on which quadrant we're in. Okay. All right, excellent. We are cooking with gas. Okay. All right. Activity three is the most challenging one, challenging one we'll do today. Okay. So you got to really think about what you see on the plate, what we know, okay? We cannot assume aside anything, all right? So using only the terms pi, theta, and 2 pi. So those are the only things you can use, all right? You can use a combination of those things, all right? Pi, theta, and 2 pi. I want you to determine the links from A to point 1, from A to point 2, from A to point three and A to point four. Take a second, think through that. It's gonna take you a minute. Okay, so you can't, <laughs> when we're labeling these, we can't use pi over two, we can't use three pi over two. The, really the only things that we know, all right, is that if I go halfway around, that's a distance of pi. If I go all the way around, that's a distance of two pi. <laughs> we also know that this arc that matches in every quadrant from A to point 1 is theta, okay? So how long is that arc from point 4 up to the x-axis? Theta. It's still theta. What about from pi back up here to point 2? Pi minus That's a theta, okay? And what about right here? Theta. That's also a theta, okay? So there's lots of thetas hanging around, all right? There's one in each quadrant. So when we speak, you don't get that part? No. I don't get how 
Okay. Okay. So from A to All right. Watch me. Okay. Because I'm going to use my unit circle while I'm doing it. Okay. From A to point one, what do we call it? Theta. Theta. Woo, we all got that one. Okay. So we got theta. All right. Now, if I go from A to point two, the only distance I know for sure is this little distance right here. I don't know this whole arc. Okay, so I've got to use distances I know. So I'm going to go all the way halfway around. That's pi, but I went too far. How much do I need to back up? A theta. a theta. Okay, because this distance is always a theta from the axis to the point. So we would call this pi minus theta. Okay, if I want to go from A to point 3, start here. Halfway is pi. That's not enough. I need to keep going. How much more do I need to keep going? A theta. So pi plus theta. Okay. And then for point four. Okay. If I go halfway, that's pi. But I can't use this distance down here at the bottom of the plate. So I got to go all the way around. Two pi. But I went too far. So let's back up a distance. How much do I need to back up? Theta. Theta. Better? Yeah. All right. Are we going to be using units with, like, these Greek letters? Like, Eventually. Theta. We're not there yet. Theta. Yeah, don't anticipate. We're not there yet. Okay. All right. We're keeping it real basic this week since we only got three days. All right. I'm getting all I can get in here for three days. All right. So here's what I want you to do. All right. We've labeled point one here as theta. I want you to go over here next to point two, not where the black part is, but kind of next to point two. And I want you, with your black marker... To label that pi minus theta. So let me show you. Okay. So put it kind of next to point two. All right. It's kind of next to point two. All right. How do I get to point two? I go pi and I back up a theta. Okay. And then next to point three, we're going to put a pi plus theta. All right. In black. And then next to point four, a two pi minus theta. So then I know how do I get to those points, okay? I go halfway around, I either back up or keep going. I go all the way around and back up. Okay, it's about moving around. That's what we're doing. Good? Not how they designed it, unfortunately. Sorry. Wait. How do you do it? Okay. So get those on there. Next to your points. Yep. Okay, so it's connected to that theta distance that we're talking about. Right? Everything we're going to do about the unit circle, okay? We move around, and here's the cool thing we're going to learn over the next couple of days. So I don't have to just go around once. I can go around a bunch of times. Okay? I don't have to just go counterclockwise. I can also go clockwise a bunch of times. All right? So there's a lot of different things that are going to happen. But if we understand the movement, we either go all the way or halfway, back up or keep going. All right? It's what we do every time, which is really kind of nice. All right? Now, last thing we have to do. All right? Point one, right next to point one or around it. We're going to give it some coordinates, all right? It's on the unit circle. It needs an ordered pair. We're going to call it A comma B, all right? We don't know what that point is. It's a variable. So next to point one <coughs> in purple, I'm going to label it A comma B. Okay. And then once you've done that, I want you to do activity four. It's the last one. We're almost got our plate ready to use. The rain is gone. He said you can see clearly now. Again, I'm going to get some musical references. No, I got that one. It's because I'm just 100. That's the problem. What is Duke yelling? No, they scored it right. I was. You were at first.
So like so someone so someone dropped out. That's so awesome. Gator bait. Yeah. 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 All right, let's check it. What are the coordinates of point two? Uh, negative, a. negative A, positive B. What are the coordinates of point three? Negative A, negative, negative, a, negative B. B. And what about point four? A, positive, a, negative, positive A, negative B. Label those on your plate in purple. Okay. Then we'll go back and finish the activity. Okay. All right. Let's jump back to our activity. What are the signs of all coordinates in quadrant one? Positive, positive. 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 What about in quadrant two? Negative, positive. Quadrant three? Negative. And quadrant four? Positive. Perfect. Okay. So those we're going to label in the yellow, kind of just in the middle. Okay. Around so you can see it. It's giving cold. It's giving skivity to them. Okay. Put friends around them. They're all in pairs. It's giving Jim Crow. Why do you keep looking at me? There's signs for all the squadrons. It's giving eyes. I think one was enough. Kevin, it's giving eyes. Wait, is that pepperoni on it? I got it. Maybe give it to Kevin. I just kind of put them in my box. You made them too tiny. This is your plate. No. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, um, um, yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's use our plate just a little bit, okay? So on eight, it says, what are the coordinates of the terminal point of an arc length eight pi? So let's think about that. If I start at A and I go all the way around, how far is that? Two pi. If I go all the way around again, four. four. If I go all the way again, six. And one more time, eight. eight. What's my ordered pair right there? One zero. One zero. Oh. Congratulations, you just did unit circle trade. Okay. It's about moving around the unit circle and picking the right point. Okay. Let's do this one. What if we wanted to do a terminal point of an arc length five pi? We start at A. All the way is two. All the way again is four. four. How much more do I need? Half. I need half. So what order pair do I land at? Negative one, zero. Perfect. Okay. Questions so far? We good? Yep. We understand where everything comes from that's on this piece of plate. Yep. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. We're getting close.
All right. So we've already done uh, the labeling. Okay. You've already done the labeling. All right. So let's generalize. How have I moved? Because I've only moved in the positive direction for our positive arc lengths. Which direction do we go from A? We go counterclockwise. Okay. So we are counterclockwise. from A, okay? We've not talked about a negative arc length, but we're gonna do one here in a second. Which way do you think would go for a negative arc length? Clockwise. Clockwise. Okay, congratulations, your unit circle is complete. Okay, everything you need to know to be able to do unit circle trick is rehearsed. Okay, you can move around this circle, you can do trades, all right? Seriously. So let's take a look at an example, okay? Let's look at example one together. We're gonna do a few of these together, all right? So I want you to notice what it tells me, okay? It tells me the coordinates of point one, all right? That it's 12 over 15 and 13 over 15, okay? It wants me to find the coordinates of the following arc lengths. Now, they didn't like writing theta, so what did they use instead? X. It's a variable. Okay? Theta is a variable. They chose X. Right? So if I want to go a distance, pi plus X, where am I going to start? A. A. I'm going to go to pi. Do I need to keep moving or back up? Keep moving. Keep moving. What point do I land at? Three. Point three. What are the signs at point three? Negative, negative. My answer is that ordered pair, negative 12 over 15, negative 13 over 15. Okay? My ordered pair is just changing signs. Okay? Let's do another one. Okay? Let's do 2 pi minus x. Okay? So I'm going to start at a. To get 2 pi, how far are we going to go? All the way. Minus, do I need to back up or keep going? Back up. So I'm going to back up to point four. What are my signs? Positive. Positive, negative. Okay. So 12, 15, negative 13, 15. Okay. Try those next two. So let's look at it. 5 pi and then minus an x, okay? Minus means change your direction, all right? So if I start at a, I'm going to go counterclockwise. For 5 pi, I'm going to have to go all the way around once. Now how many is that? 2. Two. All the way again, 4. So to get 5 pi, I need to go another half, okay? And then I want minus x. So am I going to keep going or back up? back up because I went too far. Okay. What point am I at? Point two. So I am a negative and a positive. Okay. That's how that family rectangle works. Right. All the changes are my signs. All right. Let's do another one together. Eight pi minus X. Okay. Start at A. How many times are we going to have to go around to get eight pi? Four, four times. Okay. So we go four. So then we want minus a theta or minus an x. What are we going to do? Back up. Which point are we at? Four. Okay. So positive a, negative b. Okay. Let's do that negative x one. That one's kind of weird. Okay. It's the first time we've seen a negative arc length. Okay. So if I start at a, if I'm going to go negative, then I'm going to go clockwise. If I just want to go an X, that's just a theta. So which point are we going to land at? 
0.4. Okay, so a positive and a negative. Okay, what do you think? Okay, we good with that? The first part of your homework looks like that or your practice. Okay, it gives you ordered pairs and gives you arc lengths and you write the ordered pairs. Okay. All right. Now let's look at example two. We're going to change it just a little bit. All right. So this one tells me that arc length A to P1 has a length of pi over 3. Okay. So let's just pretend this is my unit circle. So this is P1, P2, P3, P4. Okay. Okay. It's not so much interested in what's my ordered pair, but what's my exact arc length. Because what it's done is it's told me from A to point 1, theta, bless you, is a distance pi over 3. Okay? It told me theta. Right? So I want to find the length from A to P2. Now, on our plate... That length is described as pi minus theta, okay? So from A to P2, we described it as pi minus theta. So we're just going to do a little bit of arithmetic here, okay? It's fraction arithmetic, so don't be too exhausted, all right? What did we say theta was? Pi over 3, okay? So to subtract fractions, what do we have to have? common denominator. So what would pi be if I put it over 3? I'd have 3 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3. So what would that arc length be? 2 pi over 3. Okay, so we're just doing some arithmetic. Right. Okay, just doing some arithmetic. Okay. How did we on our plate... Describe the arc length from A to point 3. Pi plus theta. Okay? So let's just substitute and do that. Pi plus pi over 3. Again, pi would be 3 pi over 3 plus a pi over 3. What would we call it? 4 pi over 3. Okay, a little arithmetic. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, how did we describe point four? Two pi minus, Two pi minus theta. Okay, so the arithmetic's going to change just a smidge. Two pi minus pi over three. Now, what's two pi going to be as over three? 6 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3 gives me how many? 5 pi's over 3. Okay. Now, I want you to notice something here. I'm going to label these for just a second. All right. going to label those on a unit circle for you to see for just a second. Okay. When we were messing with pi and we rewrote it, we made it 3 pi over 3. Okay. When we were messing with 2 pi, we rewrote it as 6 pi over 3. What do you notice about those <coughs> distances compared to well, not that one, but this one. How we rewrote them. It's plus or minus one. Yeah, okay? So question. If I know the denominator of my arc length, would I be able to find those arc lengths in the other quadrants? Yes, okay? So write this to the side somewhere. Doesn't matter. You can do it on the next page if you want to. You got a lot of space on that next page. Okay? Let's say we wanted to do all four points for, uh, let's say, pi over 12. Okay? All four points for pi over 12. 
right? All we really have to know is what would pi be if it was over 12? Okay, 12 pi over 12. And what would 2 pi be? 24 be double. Okay. So now can I go plus or minus 1 to get those arc lengths? Yes. Okay. If I was going to point 2, I'd go to 12 and back up 1. How many would that leave me? If I went all the way, if I started here at A and I went to 12 and I backed up 1, how many would that leave me? 11. Okay. If I went all the way to pi, so 12, and I keep going one more, how many would that be? 13. If I go all the way to 24, but I back up one, what would that be? 23. Okay. It's all about understanding this concept of going forward, keep going, add one, back off, subtract one. And it's all based around pi and 2 pi. If I had, okay, you don't have to write this one down if you don't want to. Let's say we were doing pi over 4. Okay. What would pi be? How many? 4. How do I know it's 4? It matches the denominator. What would 2 pi be? 8. Why? It's double. Okay. And so if I wanted to get my points in the quadrant, they're plus or minus 1 from those spots. Okay. This one would be 3 pi over 4. This one 5 pi over 4. This one 7 pi over 4. Okay. Plus or minus 1. Yes. If we can do that, then why on the one where it's 12 is... That top one that we started with, not 25. It could be if I kept going. That's what we call a co-terminal arc. I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Because okay, this is like just my, that's point. my starting one. Okay. Yep. So if we went all the way around and then 224, then it would be 25. Yes. And that's where we start. So yes. Okay. Yes. And that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Okay. I'm confused where you got the 4 and the 8. Okay. This is pi. This is 2 pi, okay? My denominator is 4. So if I rewrote that as a fraction over 4, it'd be 4 pi over 4. So it's just whatever my denominator is. 2 pi, it's always double that. So that would be 8 pi over 4. I just wrote 8, just to keep it simple for me. Yes, sir? Yes. Yeah, it just tells us that it's part of a family rectangle. Yep. Okay. They're going to have common denominators, like denominators, so the over 4 family, the over 6 family, the over 3 family. You'll start to see them pop up. Okay. All right, let's look at one example. Y'all done so well. All right, so let's look at this one. Okay. So I just want to know which point do these arc lengths land at. Okay. 1, 2, 3, or 4. That's all we're doing. Point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4. All right. And so what is the family that we're doing? Over what? Three. Over three. Okay, we're doing the over three family. Okay, if I'm doing the over three family, what's pi going to be? Three. And what's two pi going to be? Six. Okay. All right, rock and roll. So here is my starting point A. All right. And the first arc length I want to do is a negative pi over 3. If I'm going to do a negative, which direction are we going to go around my plate? Clockwise. Clockwise. How far am I going to go down? Just one spot. What point am I landing at? Point 4. Okay, point 4. All right. Let's do 7 pi over 3. Okay, we're doing the over 3 family. Okay. Start at A, which way are we going to move? Counterclockwise. If I go all the way around once, how many have I been? Six. Is that enough? No, I need one more to make it seven. So which point did I land at? Point one. Because that's two pi. Two pi over three would be six pi over three. Okay. 
All right, and then let's do 10. Ooh, 10. All right. We're gonna start at A, which way are we gonna move? All right, we're gonna move counterclockwise. If I go all the way once, how much is that? Three. All the way is six. six, it's double. Halfway would be nine, six plus three. All right, so I've got six and I've got three. So that would be nine. All right, do I need to keep going or back up? Keep going. Keep going. And so which point did I land at? Point, point three. Okay, so we're just continuing to move. Let's look at this next one. Okay, negative four pi over three. So again, it's my over three family. I got three and I got six. If I'm going negative, all right, that negative just tells me which direction to go. I still count the same, okay? It's not like negative numbers, all right? Which direction are we gonna go? Yeah. Clockwise. If I go halfway, how far have I gone? Three. Is it enough? Because no. how many do I want? Four. I want four. So I'm going to keep going one more. So which point did I land at? Three. Point two. Okay? All right. So this is what you need to practice tonight. All right? You really need to practice this week. Okay? The assignments aren't long. All right? But you really need to practice. If you look, it's called Trick Assignment 1. It has six questions. Okay? Trig assignment one, it has six questions. It's all about just moving around the plate, okay? So I didn't have it put these up here yet, but we'll have a quiz, not tomorrow, but we'll have a quiz on Wednesday that covers these first two days. And then when we get back, we'll have a short little quiz that covers everything we did this week. And then we switch back to the um, AP course curriculum, okay? But the good news is when what we've done, I've covered about a half of it, <laughs> all right? So we'll be able to move pretty quick. Yes. And then we get back, like, Monday or, like, just sometime? Monday. Monday. Yeah, it'll be Monday. Wouldn't we have only covered what we've covered today and tomorrow by Monday? Because we don't have school. Well, what would we do on Wednesday? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it should be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll have a quiz. Yes. Oh, we can? You can use the plate. That's all. Are we allowed to use that on the table? We won't have a test over this. Okay. This is just your intro, but yeah.